Finally, the day has come that I'm starting to work on that large scale boho macrame wall hanging that I keep promising you for weeks now. It's going to be a pretty big piece, but also at the same time, a very simple one, at least in terms of the supplies, because there is only two things that I need for this piece. One, a piece of driftwood and two, the cords. For my wood, I will be using this branch from a birch tree. I can't even show you because it is so big. It's about 160 centimeters uh, long. And as you can see, I haven't taken the bark off, which is, I, I've um, done a piece on a birch uh, branch before, and I've done the same thing where I kept, because I feel like it just looks interesting with you know the white and then like the black shining through and yeah i think it makes for an interesting piece there is one thing that i am a little bit worried when it comes to this piece and that's this sort of angle here this wave in it which can make it a little bit more difficult to make the macrame piece nice and symmetrical We'll have to wait and see. There is a chance that it will look weird once done, but let's hope not. And then for the cords, keeping it, like I promised, nice and simple, just one type of cord, one size, one color, and that is this five millimeter single twist cord in this natural kind of off-white color. All right, so let's dive in. I've measured the whole thing and split it into quarters. And basically my middle section is gonna take two quarters of the whole length and then there will be two sections on the side. So for that middle section, I'll be putting up one really long cord with one lark's head knot here and then another one somewhere in here. And then putting all of my cords onto that one also using the regular lark's head knot. Got time on our side when I stayed on home. I need you on my fire. I want you to know that every time you're away, I long for you so much I can find my way. We got everything here, at least to stay alive. So all of the cords are up and if you look into the description of the video you will see that they're all different or there are three different lengths the longest ones those are the first four cords here on the sides then the next longest length is the eight cords here right in the middle and then the rest are the 14 on this side and on this side now our next step will be to do some double half hitches to mostly make sure that this is secured in place. So these two ropes are gonna be our travel ropes. They're from this uh, part, the, the very first cord that we've put on. And the double half hitches are gonna go this way. And of course, because these are very long cords, I'm using the fast method of doing the double half hitch. Check out that video in case you haven't seen that yet. I saw you walking the light. 
Turns out I forgot how much space the double half hitch knots require. So what I had to do is take out two of the shortest cords on each side. So there is now only 12 and 12 here. And so first tip of this wall hanging, make sure you space them with enough gaps in between all of these cords so that your double half hitch knots fit um, those gaps. Now I'm going to make a connection here in the middle and a little diamond right here. So here in the middle, you can already see that this side has a tendency to go over this side. So I'm going to pick this cord as my travel cord. And then with this one, which was the travel cord on the other side, I'll add one double half hitch onto that. And then down here for the little diamond, we will make four double half hitch knots first. And we of course will make that second half as well. However, we want this middle to be open. So that means we need these to get sort of these cords out of the way. So on this side, the first cord that's going to go onto it is this one. So I can again use that same method. However, I'm just taking the cords in the kind of opposite direction, let's say. So you can see this is the first chord, second, third, and fourth chord that are going onto the travel chord. And then tightening as usual. And then down here, since here at the top it was this chord that's on top, we will do the same thing. So this is going to be our travel cord, and then the other one is going to make the double half hitch. Now there will be more stuff in the middle, but before I get to that, I have to finish some of the other pieces. So going to the sides where we have those longest cords, I want to make sort of a diamond, but at the same time, I'm kind of tired of the diamonds, so I'm gonna go wild this time and make half diamonds only. So starting on this side, these are the eight cords that I will be working with. We're going to start first as if creating the diamond. So first, there is gonna be the three cords on each side making the double half hitch. And now comes the new part. Instead of making a second part of that diamond, we are going to make a square knot. All of these six cords are going to become our middle cords, and these two on the sides are going to make the square knot. Obviously not tightening it too much so that we don't damage this sort of arrow shape here. So just nice and easy like that. And then we repeat the same thing. So we pick two cords from somewhere in the middle of that bundle that are going to become the travel cords, put the three double half hitches on it, make a square knot, and then again. So I've done a couple of those on both sides here. Just one thing to mention, make sure that the square knots that you're making are opposite each other. I hope that you can see here, like one is facing, they're both kind of facing inwards on each of the sides. Now, these aren't done yet. I know I will have to make a few more, but I'll get to that eventually. Now to continue a little bit up here, so in this first row, what I'm going to do is this same pattern from here, except in a row like this. And I think I want to make the pattern a little bit smaller. So instead of groups of eight, I will be working with groups of six. So out of the six, the two in the middle will create that little arrow, and then there will be a square knot underneath. So I'm almost finished. Here at the end, I'm left with four chords only, not six like here. So what I did here is just two kind of alternating or, or two square knots underneath each other, but you can see this little twist here. So what I did is I just switched the outer chords into the middle and then I did the second square knot, just like I would the regular one. 
Again, the only thing here for this entire row, making sure that the square knots are facing inwards from both sides. And now I'm going to add one diamond underneath here again, but this time it will be slightly bigger because I'll add these two chords to it as well. So there is going to be six chords going on to it each side. And then again, the middle is going to be open like that. So I've got this bigger one down here and you see I added one more square knot here before joining the two chords in here. Now up here, I want to do two kind of alternating versions of this pattern, except they will be flipped like this. So first I'll make the square knots and then these two sides going like this. And then maybe again, one more of those alternating versions down here, I'll see. So that's those two added on each side. And you can see I haven't connected them at the bottom. I just leave them open like this. Now it is time to add that last diamond here out of the three and also putting on these. So it will actually be eight double half hitches on each side. And then I'll add a couple more in this series here so that I can then connect the two parts down in the middle. So the third diamond is in. I've extended this part a little bit and you can see down here, I've clipped it together. You know I like to do that before doing like the final connection. That will wait for when I add all of the other sections and for when I know I'm sure that this is where I want to connect them. And so now it is off to those other two sections. I'll be showing you just one because the other side will be the exact same. Um, so, and that, that, those two sides, they will be very similar to what we have going on here. Maybe there will be some slight changes, um, but basically it will be just a smaller version of all of this. So I've done that one part there, and now I'll show you on the other side what I did in that section. I started in the exact same way as the big section, so adding one chord with the lark's head knots and then adding all the other chords onto it. This time separating them nicely, and I ended up with having 20 chords on there. I then did the one row of double half hitch knots underneath it and then added that open diamond with four double half hitch knots on each side. Then on the sides, I created that same braid pattern, this time only adding two double half hitch knots on each side, and then creating that square knot underneath. For the other chords, I did those square knots and then crossing them to create the alternating square knots in between those two. And I ended up having four square knots on each side. So all three sections are nearly finished. What I think I want to do down here at the bottom to connect the two braids is just a simple gathering knot so that all of these cords are hanging down in this like all you know bunched up together. So I'm taking another piece of cord and you know, aligning these two nicely. Then I take this cord into the back the shorter side, they're the one I know I'm going to cut off, goes to the top. The other side creates a little bit of a loop. Then I hold the two ends together here. And with the longer one, I start wrapping around all of these cords. 
making probably about three or four rounds. Okay, four looks good. So at this point, the rest of the long cord, I'm gonna pull through the loop that I created here and then I'll take the top and pull. So that pulls that loop underneath the cords here and makes it very secure. Once I check from a bit of a distance that it all looks good, I take my scissors and I can trim this part that's sticking out here. Next step is to add some fringe. I'm adding um, the fringe to these little sections here in between the square knot and the double half hitch knots. And as you can see here, I'm sticking with that bunch theme and I'm actually taking two cords and adding them together with the regular Lark's head knot to those spaces there. So it will be two cords for these little sections and then probably three cords in a bunch for the large section in the middle. And then I just need to trim it and then that's it for these three sections. Getting closer to the finish line with all the sections being trimmed and fringed. Now, what I want to do as the next step is to close these gaps. There's one here and then on the other side between the two sections. So for that, I'll add a couple more cords here and then again, do a similar pattern like we did with, with this and then the crossed square knots. So I made this additional part super simple, just five cords at the top, one side, the square knot, then an alternating one with the cross in the middle. On the other side, that pattern we've been doing from the three cords, a square knot underneath it, and then down here, an alternating and crisscross, again, an alternate with the crisscross, and then last one. So kind of four in this row. And then for the trimming down here, I just made sure that it sort of comes up into this triangle up here. And now that those connecting sections are done, the very last part that I want to do is add another little section here. And then that one will have some kind of a braid. I actually haven't decided yet what exactly it will be, but there will be like multiple braids that are then going to go in these sort of waves to both of the sides. Okay, so to start those braids, I've added exactly the same way like we did here, this one additional cord and then 11 cords on it here made a row of the double half hitches. So then these two cords here in the middle, they are the cords that, that this is hanging on, the one cord. And then this cord right here in the middle, there is one double half hitch that goes this way and one double half hitch going this way. So we have an even, I think it is right, even amount of cords here so that we can put them into groups of four. And the kind of braids that I'm thinking of is pretty much this. So just super simple square knots, but then with that cross in between each square knot. So I made just a couple from each section. Um, so you see, first of all, that the square knots are again facing inwards. So on these three sections, they're going that way. And then on these three sections, they're going that way. You also see that I've made the crossings a little bit tighter. So they, they are really just right like underneath each other. And at the tops, pay attention to make sure that you squeeze them all the way to the top. So then like the square knots are pretty much like this in here instead of being leveled like this. That's because once we attach them to the sides, so they're kind of hanging in these waves, that it's not creating any extra cords on the sides here. And so this is how I will continue on all of them until I get them to the right lengths. So I think I've gotten all of these to the right length. 
What I kept doing the whole time as I was making them is I would be putting them sort of together like this and then testing to see how does it look. I know you can't really see. How does it look if I were to put them up here and yeah, and then deciding, okay, is that a good kind of, does it have a good, nice wave, etc. So yeah, I think I got them to the right place. And now to attach three there and the other three on the other side. So we're going to attach it very simply like I've done here. And now I'll show you on the other side. So first get your three cords together where the last square knots are ending. And because they're all different lengths, that means that that creates then these waves. Then you put all of the cords over the piece of driftwood. Then you pull them forward in here. And then you wrap them around the cords, creating this little hole here through which you're going to pull them forward again all of those cords and now you tighten just hold it tight and tighten like that nothing too difficult no special knot or anything like that so they are attached. You can trim if there is any cords that you can see down there. I actually made my cords quite short for these parts. So in the description below the video, you will find the lengths are a little bit longer than what I was actually using. So you should have a little bit more cords down here that you can trim. And that's it for this wall hanging. I hope you guys have enjoyed the tutorial as much as I enjoyed making this piece. It really was nice to do something that's in this you know, boho vibes with the natural chords and the interesting piece of driftwood where I think actually this turned out cool. So it's good. It doesn't look weird that it has that wave in it. And I hope this is what you were looking for when you were asking for the larger piece. So there you go. And I'll see you in my next tutorial. Bye.